Okay, so in this video, I'm going to basically kind of walk through a theorem that pretty much encapsulates, kind of like wraps up everything, you know, bundles up everything that we know so far about subsequential limits or the set of subsequential limits for a sequence. Um, so let me state the theorem. This is theorem 11.8 in the book. Uh, so uh, let SN be a sequence and S the set of subsequential limits, bit of a mouthful. Then there are three things we can say. S is non-empty. Two, um, the supremum of S is the limb sup of Sn. And similarly, the, it, whoops, the infimum of S is the limb inf. And lastly, uh, right, limb limit of Sn exists if and only if, this is an abbreviation for if and only if, by the way, uh, S has exactly one element. Okay, so two of these, parts one and three, are actually pretty much um, trivially consequences of things that we've already done. So, uh, you know, so this is uh, because we know uh, from theorem 11.7 that um, S contains at least the limb inf and limb sup. So this is from 11.7, which we just did. S contains the limb inf and limb sup. Okay, and those could possibly be the same number, of course. Uh, and then for three, uh, this we've just seen, I mean, this is basically, yeah, theorem 10.7. So, um, you know, in this case, right, given the first two properties here, if we know the first two things, then, uh, you know, S has exactly one element if and only if it's supremum and infimum are the same thing, right? Uh, otherwise, it has to have at least two elements. So, um, S has one element if inf S equals sub S, right? Uh, which is equal to the single element. Oh, nice, loud motorcycle. All right, anyway, um, so that's uh, parts one and three. So let's focus on part two. Um, let me see. So, uh, Let's talk about why this would be true and also actually what this is actually saying, okay? And I've said this before, I've actually sort of hinted at this idea before, but that basically um, the limb sup is actually the biggest subsequential limit that you can find, right? That's the content of this statement is that, you know, limb sup from the way it's defined, it's not baked in, you know, it's not embedded in that definition that it is the biggest subsequential limit, it's just defined as the limit of a certain sequence of, you know, supremum of like, you know, uh, Sn for N greater than capital N or whatever, right? Uh, taking the limit of that. It's not built into that definition that this should be the largest subsequential limit, even though it might seem intuitively clear that that's actually the case. So let's focus on, on this, okay? Um, so here's how this goes, all right? Uh, so let proof of, proof of two, right? Let S and K be a subsequence of Sn whose limit exists, right? We're only concerned, and of course, I'm not saying, I'm being careful not to say that SNK converges, remember, because the limit can exist without it converging. So 
but I'm not interested in subsequences whose limit doesn't exist because I'm trying to, um, I'm only interested in showing things about uh, the elements of S, right? And, sh and the elements of S are the subsequential limits. So they come from subsequences whose limit exists, right? Here's the general strategy, I guess. So the strategy show that the lim sub Sn is an upper bound for S, okay? And of course the lim inf can be treated similarly showing that it's a lower bound because that will show that um, sup of S is less than or equal to the lim sup of S. But we also know that the lim sup of S is actually in S. So it's actually the maximum, yeah. Uh, so we'll show that it's an upper bound for S. Uh, so uh, call the limit SNK say, or, you know, let's say define right, I don't know, words. Lim SNK equals, what do they use? Oh, they don't even give it a name. All right, whatever. I'm gonna call it S, okay? Uh, now, so we wanna show S is less than or equal to uh, Lim sup. SN. Sorry. Okay. So how are we going to do this? Well, um, we will show that the limb sub SNK is less than or equal to the limb sub SN. And here we're going to use the same trick that we did before where we note that NK is greater than greater than or equal to k uh, for every k. So basically, um, if you consider, so note that uh, the sup of um, n k, s n k for k greater than n for any capital N. or any n, uh, this sub is less than or equal to a different one, supremum of Sn for n greater than n, uh, because nk is greater than, uh, greater than or equal to k for all k, right? So because nk is greater than or equal to k, all of these elements are actually in this set as well. Right. So basically this set over here is a subset of this set. Right. So if you have a subset, then obviously the supremum of a subset has to be less than or equal to the supremum of the entire set. Right. So uh, another way of thinking about this is just like, if you remember, we defined this as like, uh, you know, V N or whatever, what, this was like a sequence. And this is like V, you know, let's call it uh, V, V, N. Well, actually, never mind. Uh, let me not, not get bogged down in this. I think this is not going to be helpful. Sorry. Anyway, so uh, NK is greater than or equal to K. So all of these things are in this set because when K is greater than N, then NK is greater than N as well. So this is less than or equal to this. Okay, great. So this shows, um, this shows that the sequence defining uh, lim sup snk, right, over k. In the book, they write a little k here. And that's literally just a reminder that in this case, k is the real index of the sequence. So it's like you're letting k increase. And that's the sequence that you're looking at, right? Uh, so, well, let me, how do I phrase this? How about I'll say this? Um, say uh, Vn is Sn for n greater than n, and Vn prime 
is, or sorry, this is a sup, and then sup of s and k for k greater than n. Uh, then v n prime is less than or equal to v n for all n. So the limit of the v n prime is less than or equal to the limit of v n, right? But the limit of v n prime is the limb sup of s n k, right? So this is limb sup s n k, and this is limb sup s n, okay? So limb sup s n k is less than or equal to limb sup of s n, and that's what we wanted to show. So now that shows, so I'm going to erase some stuff now. So this, this is the fact that we're exploiting here. Now that we know that limb sup SNK is less than or equal to limb sup SN, that means that, um, you know, we know that uh, S equals limb sup SNK is less than or equal to limb sup SN, okay? So limb sup SN, is an upper bound for S. And that tells us that um, since limb sup SN is also in S, limb sup SN equals uh, not only the supremum of S, but actually max of S, which also equals the supremum of S. And if the max exists, then it's equal to the supremum, okay? So that's part two of the theorem, and that's all for this uh, video. In the next one, we will talk about the set of subsequential limits being closed.